This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today, I'm creating remote shells with Netcat in Linux. Now, remote shells on Linux are pretty similar to Windows. When you begin, you'll notice no user prompt appears for you, so that is a little bit different. You need to pay attention to that. You'll also need to run Netcat through sudo to do remote shells, aka super user. We have discussed that on a previous hack tip as well. Now, this time, the listener is going to be my Linux machine, so we'll go ahead and start there on my Linux machine with this following command. So it's spelled out as such. Go sudo nc tech lp and then you type in your port 31337 and you'll notice the lp this time is not capitalized and then we put tech e slash bin slash bash so what this is going to do is start netcat under super user control or root and then it's going to open up a, a persistent listening port on 31337 while pulling up bin and bash, which is basically the equivalent of Windows of the Windows command prompt. So now on your Windows box, we're also going to connect to the host PC and that opened port. So this time the listener, my Linux machine, will give bash to my Windows PC, if that makes sense. So the command for this over on my Windows PC is going to be as following. I type in nc and then the IP address of my Linux box, which is going to be 10.73.31.145. And you can look that up by using ifconfig on your Linux machine. And then you type in 31337, which is the same port as your Linux box. Hit both. And it should connect me. Okay, so after we go ahead and put in our password, we are connected. Now it does look a little bit different than the Windows version, you'll notice, and we'll test this out right after the break. The Hack Shop is Hack5's premier store for all of your pen testing needs, including one of my favorites, the USB rubber ducky, which looks just like a flash drive and it types like a keyboard. It can type scripts into a computer ridiculously fast, like my new favorite from forum user Levi, that will flip your computer screen. He shared with us, today my one and a half year old son managed to flip the screen of my Windows 8 laptop upside down. Even the mouse movements were mirrored. Thought it was a cool one to write a simple script for that one as an old school prank. Now this is great for pranking your coworkers. I did it to Darren, it totally worked. We couldn't do this show without your support, so we would like to thank you with something special this week. You can use the coupon code SNUBS for any order for your very own signed Hack Tip stickers. Thank you again for supporting the show. And we're back. And now we're going to start toying around with some features of a remote shell on Linux. Now I've got both of my computers set up and connected, so now I'm going to type ls onto my Windows command line on my Windows machine to see a return listing of directories on my Linux machine. So, for example, if you type this in, ls, like I did right here, I'm going to get a whole listing of everything on my Linux machine. So that includes my desktop, documents, downloads, music, everything normal, Netcat, pictures, public, Sparkle Share, templates, and videos. So all my normal folders that you would find on my Linux box. Now in Windows, I can also do some fun stuff. So I can use this to make a new directory if I wanted to. And I'm just going to use the regular Linux commands for this. So that's going to include make directory, which is mkdir. And then I'll make a new one called noob and press enter. So now I can also use the ls command again to see if the directory was indeed created. So I'll type that in ls. And now I see noob right in the center. Now, if I wanted to, I can also add a new user. I can give them root access. But before I do that, I want to also take a look at my Linux machine and make sure that these actually appeared in my directory. So I'm going to actually use the GUI for this. Just double click on the computer. There we go. And if I choose home, there's my noob folder, <laughs> it totally worked. 
It's so much fun. I love doing stuff like this. So now let's get back into the whole story of this concept. Let's add a new user and give them root access. So the command for this one, and this is back on my Windows computer, the command is going to be user add, user add, tack g, and then root and the name of your user. So for this example, I'm gonna use user add, tack g, root, and I'm gonna name my user, uh, let's use Paul, Paul the camera guy, ha ha ha. So I press enter with this. And it's not gonna say anything quite yet, but now I can use this command to make sure that the user has been actually created. I can grep my user Paul and then slash etc slash pass WD, which is going to show me a listing of all the users on my Linux machine. So I type in grep Paul slash etc slash pass WD. And there he is. Paul, home, Paul, bin, slash, sh. So funny. So now I can go ahead and dump the entire passwd file using tail, the tail command. So this one is going to be as such, tail, slash, etsy, slash, passwd. And press enter. That's so cool. So now I see, okay, there's my username snubs, and we also have Paul down here. We see how much uh, information I can get out of snubs. So I'm pretty much the admin of this computer and bin slash bass. And then we also have Paul down here and all of his commands, bin slash sh. That's so fun. So you can do tons of other things with Netcat, including remote shells, of course, but I wanna know how you guys use Netcat. I've been given a lot of really interesting examples, and of course, I'll be going over there in future episodes of Hack Tip. So if you use it, send me a comment below, or you can email us over at tips at hack5.org, and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack 5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technologist.